So far, when we've been looking at subgroups, we've had to go through and verify all the important properties of a group. There's nothing wrong with that. However, we'd really like to be able to sort of shortcut the process. The less work we have to do, obviously the better. There are a couple of different tests for this, and in particular, the one that I usually find the most useful is this thing called the two-step group subgroup test. Basically, it says that if you're checking for a subgroup, you only need to check two out of the four properties that we normally have to. I'm not going to do a big formal proof of this, but I do want to kind of sketch out why this is. So we know there are four properties that we look for to check whether something's a group. We have to check that it's closed under the operation. We have to check that the operation is associative. We have to check that an identity exists. And we have to check that every element has an inverse. Well, right off the bat, we're assuming two of these things, or we need to check two of them. No matter what, we need to check that the thing's closed, and we need to check that the inverses exist. But if I have those two things, the other two I kind of get for free. Because we know that this is a subset of G. We know it has the same binary operation that G has. The operation on G was associative. So if it works for all the elements of G, it certainly works for a smaller collection of the elements in G. So it's automatically going to be associative. And the identity follows from what we have. We know it's not empty, so there's at least one element in there. We know it's closed under inverses, so if A is in there, A inverse is in there. And if A and A inverse are in there, we're assuming that it's closed under the operation, so when I multiply them, I get the identity, so the identity has to be in there. By using this, we only have to check two properties to find out that something's a subgroup. Now, if we didn't know it was a subset of an original group, we have to go through all four again. But because we know it's part of a larger group, we're kind of inheriting some stuff for free. Let's do an example of how this works. We've got a set of two by two matrices whose determinants are non-zero. We actually, that was one of our first group examples we looked at. We called it GL2R. And what I'm going to say is I'm going to look at the subset of those. So I'm still going to have two by two matrices. Their determinants are not going to be zero. But specifically, I'm taking ones whose determinants are one. Because this is a subset of G, by this two-step subgroup test, all I need to check is, is this thing closed under multiplication? And if an element is in there, is its inverse in there? So, suppose two matrices A and B are in H. That means the determinant of A would have to be 1, and the determinant of B would have to be 1. But, by the properties of determinants, the determinant of A times B is the determinant of A times the determinant of B. So that would have to be 1 times 1, which would be 1. So if A and B are in H, so is A times B. So H is closed under the operation. What about inverses? Well, it's actually very similar. Suppose A is in H. That means the magnitude of uh, the determinant of A is 1. 
because the determinant is not zero, it does have an inverse. And another property of determinants is that the magnitude of A inverse is 1 over the determinant of A. Well, that's 1 over 1 is 1. So there we go. If A has determinant 1, so does A inverse. That means that if A is an H, A inverse is an H. By just doing those two things, by just showing that it's closed under the operation and closed under inverses, I know that H is actually a subgroup of G. If we have a finite set, If we have a finite set, we can actually make it even easier. I'm not going to go through the proof of this. You can look at the book for it. But in the case that we are taking a finite subset of a group, we actually only need to check even one thing. If we just check that H is closed under the operation of G, then H is a subgroup of G. You don't even need to check whether the inverses thing is there. Just it being finite and being closed under the operation is good enough to guarantee that it's a subgroup.